Um, well, hello guys, and um, it's been quite some time since I did my last video here. So today we're going to take a look at and tear down my Agilent E3610A power supply. And I reckon for the money, this is one of the best power supplies you can get because it's, um, number one, it's Agilent, which means it's very high quality, good brand. And it's, um, there, it's, it's, it goes relatively cheaply on eBay. I mean, you can pick one up for a hundred bucks, which is roughly what you'd pay for a comparable Chinese cheapie. And it's full linear, none of that switch mode rubbish. So why don't we um, power it up and take a look. Right, so it's very simple operation. You turn it on. You can adjust the voltage and whatnot. And there's um, constant current as well as constant voltage mode as well. So I can get a resistor out and we can Take a play around with that. Uh, give me a second, let me find one. Okay. So let's just say that we are, we want to stay in two amp mode and we just set the current. Let's say we want 0.2 amps. All right, and then now we just crank the voltage up to the highest and then We'll put the resistor on it and we can go into our constant current mode. So, you know, it might be easier if I get these spring hooks. Yeah, I said it might be easier if I if I get these. I purchased these from um, Frankie Tong on eBay on the forum as I Love Electronics. And well, he sells some pretty good stuff, so. And plus these were, God, these were dirt cheap. These were, what, five bucks? I mean, I go to my local fries and I pay much more than that. And these are silicone as well, so we can plug it in. So, um, let's go ahead. So, I'm just going to hook up the resistor off camera. And bam, see? Goes to constant current mode, and then it puts out the current, which is what I set, like point. Like, see, I can set the current myself, I can say, and then you can look at the voltage change. So that's constant current mode, and um, as Dave said, it has a nice low output voltage range. It goes from 0 to 8 volts on 3 amps, and 0 to 15 volts on 2 amps. So um, for some of the higher power stuff, it'll still work, but this is mainly for general electronics. Alright, so um, that's about it. Yeah, it has the 2 amps and 3 amps range, you can adjust that. So um, that's, that's about it. It's very simple, quick operation. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, we can, oops, I just, I just made the knob fly out there. <laughs> Bloody button. It's not, yeah, I purchased this used, so um, sit and we can tear it apart. All right. All right, so I'm back, and um, right now we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna tear this um, power supply down. So, so go go at it. So basically, when you look at this, um, please note that it is 115 volt only, and that um, pl plugging this into 230 will make the magic smoke is escape. So when purchasing, be wary of that. So there are no screws on this. You just sort of pry the little plastic bits out. Um, yeah. I think I have to go at it on the bottom as well. So I'm gonna take go take it on the bottom. Yeah, I did buy this on eBay and one of these rubber feet were missing, so I had to put my I had a jury rig my own solution on. So well, I just love breaking calibration voice. So you have this one plastic piece holding it in the back and the front. The front is significantly harder to take off and it never fails to piss me off so let's let's go god damn it so obviously this is not the best technique to take your power supply apart but okay yeah no that's a problem okay there we go Things are coming along nicely now, so, um, yeah, so I guess we have to uh, try and pry off a little from the side as well. 
So I'm just going to reorient re it. It's hard looking at the camera because unfortunately I can't find the Canon software that I'm supposed to use to look at what I'm filming right now. So uh, but that is a disadvantage in it. Alright, so. Um, yeah. Okay, so now that that's off, you can take this off. And I actually think I did it wrong. You're not supposed to pop the entire front panel off. So that is a mistake I may have made, but let's not worry about that now. And then this top piece comes right off. Okay. So that was simple enough. So, okay, yeah. I This front part, it just hinges on the wires here. So that's fine. And looking at it, I must say... I am really impressed with the construction quality on this main power board, if you can see. Um, okay, no, that's the focus. Oops. Uh, zoom. Okay, that's what we need. So if you can see, it's um, all nice, through, beautiful through-hole components. Just looks like a... Okay. Yeah, I'm using this on a tripod in it, and the tripod likes to drift, so, okay. So if you take a look, you see it's all nice, beautiful through-hole components. Um, the brands are all top, are all top-notch, like we have Vishay Dale here, and we have Nietzsche Khan. Um, basically, what you expect from Agilent, and we do have a real mains power switch, not a soft switch. Um, I'm not sure if it's new, if it's like that on the new U8000 series, but looking at it, it just gives you a good impression of a nice, high quality um, build. And it does have the, and um, let me show you the, oh God. So it does have the nice Borns 10 turn pots right here. These potentiometers are actually really quite expensive if you buy them on yourself. So, um, looking at the construction, we have a big ass transformer right here. It's absolutely massive. It's, uh, it's pretty big. It's not really that massive. It's okay. But, um, and then we look, we have a filter cap over here. And under here is what I would assume to be the um, bridge rectifier would be under this big heat sink. Um, and we have two um, output capacitors in the back. Let me, let me, let us take a look at those. So, no, not capacitors, I'm sorry, transistors. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm a bit tired today. And even inside for the calibration, you get the nice 10 turn pots. Let's see if we can zoom in on one of them and take a look. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so these are the calibration pots. Um, this is not a really microcontroller-based power supply. It's more so an analog. It's a nice analog one. And um, in down here, what this is, is this is the meter circuitry. So we can take a look at that. Yeah, we don't move. We, we get rid of the nice um, through-hole stuff on the meter circuitry. Not sure if you guys can see it because, um, okay, let me find a way to show you. So I think if I can move this, oh god, it's a heavy, it's a heavy. So yeah, you can take a look in here. And from what I know, let's, let's see what chips are they using. Microchip. Is that a pick in there? I'm, I'm not really sure. So, um, this power supply actually is designed in-house by Agilent and this was their low range, low end. So um, what Agilent have decided to do is do it in-house instead of like um, their low end 1000 series oscilloscopes which I think everyone knows were pretty much just regals. So yeah, that's, that's basically it inside. Um, the nice thing about these is if you can get one broken these are really s simple to fix. I mean, there's none of, there's no like firmware you need to reflash and all of that. And plus, the schematic is readily available online. So um, if you do need that, it's all available for you. So yeah, um, I guess I'm gonna put it back together and 
I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.